Here is a 2024 Volkswagen Taos SEL 4 Motion in deep black pearl over the two-tone leather. The SEL is the top of the line trim. They offer three different trim lines. When you option for motion, it changes the suspension and gives you a DSG automatic transmission opposed to a Tiptronic. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and I'm gonna go over some pros and cons. The problem that I have with the Taos and comparable rivals, the SEL gets adaptive LED headlights and daytime running. Standard is just LED headlights and daytime runnings. The light bar that integrates into the center of the grill is also part of the SEL with over six inches of clearance. You're gonna have the honeycomb in the top and on the lower trim with the satin aluminum, the gloss black elements, highlight the side curtains going against rival perspective. Like Subaru, the Crosstrack just got a refresh. This has been out for a couple of years now, but this is gonna have a sportier ride because it doesn't have a linear Tronic CVT transmission. You have two different transmission choices like I was illustrating in the beginning, in which one is gonna be a little bit more sporty and the other is gonna be more of a cruising type vehicle. But both transmissions will option the same engine option. The 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder with 158 horsepower and 184 pound feet of torque. We have the four motion, so this has the seven speed DSG automatic transmission, which you get a multi-link rear suspension. If you option the eight speed Tiptronic, that's a front wheel drive, you'll get a torsome beam. Reaching 60, it's gonna put a smile on your face because it's not gonna be that. This is not a vehicle that's track driven. We're gonna start off with 17 inch wheels. When you go to four motion, it adds 18 inch wheels. 19 inch wheels is the option for the SEL. Achieving 24 MPGs for the city and 32 MPGs for the highway. Going back to the rival perspective, the Subaru Crosstrack will have the most horsepower and it's going to be a little bit quicker on those zero to 60s. Plus it's going to have the best ground clearance. Comparing this against the Chevy Trax, this is going to have more horsepower and you're not worrying about a turbocharged three cylinder both of which will have automatic transmissions, but when you're going DSG, it's gonna be a little bit more sporty for that day in and day out use. The fenders will receive the matte black with the side skirt, chrome around the lower part of the window trim, and raised roof rails, which is good for tie down, so now you don't have to option the crossbars. One of the best in class with towing, up to 1,500 pounds. Payload, over 900 pounds. Now, the problem with that is if you pack this vehicle up, this is basically a Jetta picked up. So it's not gonna go very fast, especially if you're trying to get past 60 miles per hour. It's more of a city vehicle, but it can go onto the interstate in which it will take a little bit longer, but you have the adaptive cruise control because this is the SEL. And the lower bumper is fit with fake exhaust outlets. Come on, Volkswagen. You don't need to put them so high up. We understand, this is a 1.5 liter. You're not getting 200 horsepower. There's no Brembo brakes or performance to this car. It's an everyday compact SUV. We don't need to add this. Quick release going into 27.9 cubic feet. The rear sits up a little bit and you'll have a little bit of a lip. That's why you get the scuff plate here added and you don't have to worry about scratching your bumper. 12 volt charger, you give two storage nooks, LED interior lights with bag holders underneath the floor gets a spare tire. Because I'm tall, I'm going to do this from the back. You can fold it down at a 40-60 split, increasing cargo to 65.9 cubic feet. Ten-way power seat adjustment for the driver, six-way manual adjustment for the passenger. The SE unlocks power seat adjustment. Heated and ventilated seats come on the SEL. Headroom and leg room. Even though this is a small, compact SUV, you have plenty of space. It isn't as driver-focused as some of the Volkswagen line, which makes it a little bit more playful. Beats audio sound system will only be on the SEL. You get a storage tier up here, auto dimming rear view mirror with a large pano moon roof and the interior lights are LED. 
This is also the only trim that you get over 30 colors for ambient lighting. 6.5 is going to be the standard touch screen for the S. The SE unlocks this 8 inch. We have Gesture, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. Put it into reverse and we get a reverse camera. When you click onto here, you can see the car so you can see the reverse sensors. The trajectory will expand. Dual climate control settings, which is known as Climatron for Volkswagen, starts on the SE. Wireless charging pad is only on this tier with a 12 volt, 2 USB, and the key fob. Because it's a four motion, we also have the driving mode select for that DSG automatic transmission, which is a dual clutch. You can change it into sport. You can also adjust it yourself. And there's a lot of different adjustments that you can tailor through. This is gonna be pushed back a little bit and it's more sporty. It opens up to a deep storage pocket and even goes inwards a little bit. It's just not so wide. Leatherette steering wheel, multi-function heated, and the gauge cluster is a 10.25, which is standard on all trims. That can go through an array of information for the driver, including the turn-by-turn -turn navigation. You can also put the maps here, but if you do so, you will not be able to see it here as you're noticing the change. It's gonna have a gloss gray that integrates into the gloss black elements door panel is going to have the same materials. It's gonna be a little bit more of the everyday use, harder plastic that is. It's gonna be a little bit more soft here. And where you rest your arms is gonna be just the same materials. One touch up and down for all the windows, a long and deep storage pocket in the front. For the back seats, headroom and the leg room with storage behind both of the front seats. The USB port starts on the SE. You get a storage tray, air vents, armrest with cup holders and the door is going to have the same materials except you're noticing it's all everyday materials. They've stripped out the pattern in which that was the only soft materials in the whole door. The storage is going to be about the same size as the front so that takes care of the back occupants sliding into the center. The rails are not pushed up enough. So you're going to be sharing some feet space, button shoulder space and leg space, but headroom is more than enough for somebody over six foot tall. The Taos is basically a Jetta picked up. 158 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. So when you're thinking, I need more space than a Jetta because it's just too compact for me and I want all the amenities, then you have to go at least to the SE trim in order to get some of what we're getting here. The SEL boasts a lot of technology. And on the exterior, you're getting a little bit more so as well. And I would personally option it with the seven speed DSG automatic transmission because it's gonna be more sporty for the suspension. It's also gonna drive more sporty, which I got it in sport mode and check her out. You sit up high. It doesn't quite feel like six inches of clearance though. It feels a little bit lower. Only reason why it feels like you have good ground clearance is because the seats set up higher and the door panels are lower. Even though the power isn't where I would want it to be for horsepower and torque, I'm happy to see that it is still a four cylinder turbocharge opposed to the Chevy Trax three cylinder because let's face it, there's gonna be some hiccups with that engine, the way it is just built overall. The interior though, I like the sporty style of that, but if you're needing more room, I like the interior of this because you have more cubbies found throughout. The back seat is about the same in the cargo capacity and this is really good. Plus you have towing capabilities and payload and look at the maneuverability. Can move in and out of lanes relatively freely. The steering is gonna have a little bit of weight, more so than anybody in its class. But it feels light, especially when you're in sport mode. Because this is a dual clutch automatic transmission, you will feel more jerks, opposed to the eight-speed Tiptronic, which will be a little bit more smooth of a drive. And turn radius at a stop point. It'll be a little bit longer than I want. Well, actually not too bad, about two lanes. It's 
little bit more playful and active too. We're going to put it into normal so that way we can see the difference in the driving modes. That's gonna take me to my pros and cons and starting off with the pros is you have two different options for transmissions which can make this a lot more playful but you will have some jerks or a lot more smooth but it's not going to be as active. Weight distribution is at 59.41 so it's not something you're gonna be cornering in anyways safety is taken care of a con is if you go from the s to the se you start going around five grand difference in msrp you will have a lot more options and that 6.5 inch touchscreen is definitely a con standard should be an eight inch i do like that you are able to option leather seats and it's still just in the mid 30,000 price point because when you're considering you're getting a wireless charger you're getting the light bar on the exterior upgraded 19 inch wheels four wheel drive you start ticking the box for quite a bit of pros the big problem that i have is even though you get a dsg automatic transmission the power underneath the hood is just not fast enough it takes a lot to motivate the vehicle to 60 and even when you're passing 60 it still gets a little bit tired whenever you're trying to go onto the interstate As for comparable rivals, Volkswagen does a great job with the interior amenities, especially when you go up to the SE. Going into the base trim, you are going to lack quite a bit, and then the Chevy Trax kind of becomes the sweet spot, even though it's a turbocharged three-cylinder. The Subaru Crosstrack, I feel they did a great job with that. It has a little bit more power, but the linear Tronic CVT transmission, it doesn't necessarily have problems it's just if i can option a dsg or an 8-speed tiptronic i would prefer that route because it's less service and the longevity is typically longer but because this is more of a practical everyday vehicle i'm glad that we could still have some pleasure with it and they don't just stick it with the torsum beam like they do with the mazda not changing it out making it a little bit more fun but let me know what you think in the comments and if you're new to the channel consider subscribing check out the next video merchandise website and instagram leave a comment and a like and i'd like to thank volkswagen of newport ritchie for giving us this 2024 volkswagen taos sel for motion for our car review